the time has come to shed light on the genesis of the universe. In the previous articles, we had shaped a certain idea about the cosmos, the aliens, the creator's role in the universe, and so on. Such articles describe the results achieved thanks to our research on the issues related to abductions and alien interferences on our planet, within the limits of the techniques we use to examine thoroughly such phenomena. We now are able to give a better and more detailed image for the map of the territory. We obtain such information through hypnosis, a useful tool to bring to awareness our abductee's soul component, and also through some mental simulation techniques such IMBAD and flash simulation. Such mental simulation systems do not require an external simulator but they can be self-induced. However, we'll talk about this specific subject in our next work. For now, it is sufficient to know that we tried to use the abductees who already had solved their abduction issue as remote viewer, so to say. Their remote view capabilities were extremely interesting and gave us excellent cues that allowed us to create an organization chart for the entire creation. We, ourselves, couldn't believe the results we reached at the end. A final surprise. But let's proceed in an orderly manner. In plain words, we ask the sole component once separated from the triad, to describe some of the events about the past and about the evolution of our planet. We listened to certain statements that were pronounced by the abductees. They were not always the result of a question. They came up in both cases. If we were there asking, and also if we were not there, during the first stage, the abductees we worked with couldn't contact each other. We allowed their statements to be compared only afterwards. The three-doctor organization chart which we present you here represents the creation of the universe based on the descriptions provided by the soul components. In such organization chart, we made a major adjustment to the previous hypothesis. This adjustment concerns the character and figure of primordial man. With primordial man we indicate the expression and creation of the primordial man by the first creator, one of the two creators produced by the initial consciousness. Many people recently asked us to clear this character's position. We thought at first when we had just started our research, that he was our good father and creator, and instead he is a really shady character. But let's proceed in an orderly manner, and let's see what happens in the moment when the creation wakes up. The Big Picture We did prepare the picture below in order to describe the whole universe. This will be our reference point, the outline to follow and to compare with our written description of the events, moment after moment. Consciousness and free will. Let's start from the top and look at the essence of consciousness that we represent as a luminous source. Consciousness has always existed since it is eternal. But one day this is a meaningless time symbolism. We should rather say a perceptive moment. Ayan, it woke up and lighted up. And consciousness becomes aware of itself in that moment aware of being, not of existing. But it does not know how it is it doesn't know itself. The only way it has to know how it is would be looking in a mirror. But there's no such thing as a mirror yet. And so consciousness creates a mirror for itself. 
and the mirror is actually the virtual universe, as we said and described in our previous works. So it looks at itself through the virtual universe. At this point, consciousness decides that it must experience itself. It must know and not just look at itself in the mirror. We can say that it must know itself, touch itself, and experience itself. In that moment consciousness emanates, through an act of will, the desire to experience, and it decides to experience without any limitations. This thought creates dualism right in that moment. Dualism is the fundamental expression of choice. In other words, if I decide I want to have an experience, I also decide that I can choose my experience. So, I understand the meaning of choosing and its relationship to the responsibility of choosing. Consciousness has always the opportunity to become aware and the opportunity not to want to become aware. In plain words, consciousness does not create a track and tells you, just go forward. Instead, it creates a track. It sets you halfway, and it just says go. And so you can go forward or backwards as you prefer. This is an aspect in our creation which produces a peculiar effect. You can be anywhere in the universe and you can always go up or down, to the right or to the left, high or low, and so on. Anything you can do will have a plus sign plus or a minus sign, and you are the one who chooses what to do. In that moment free will is born. The two creators. Consciousness is one. It is not dual and it is eternal. It is, it has been, and it will be. So consciousness cannot change itself, but only its awareness of being, which it acquires during its life experiences. Such experiences must be lived by something which is actually its virtual image. Such image is created by consciousness itself and it is obviously dual. And so, by necessity, two creators are created, and each one of them is free to choose what to do. There couldn't be just one creator, and there couldn't be three creators, but just two. Because this universe is created on a dual base. The two creators can choose two different evolutionary paths, and it is through them and through their expression that consciousness will understand who it really is and how it is. Because it already understood that it is, and that it exists through lighting itself up the initial act of creation, the initial act of being aware of oneself, the first creator and its descent. We wanted to abbreviate the name for the first creator with C1 and we placed it on the right of the observer. This was an unconscious and archetypal choice. Such first creator chose to create, in its turn, a perfect being through which he could experience. We will call this being primordial man. Primordial man has certain primordial features. First of all, he has a soul component, which is very well connected to his own self. He's almost an emanation of his creator, and at times he mingles with it. So, primordial man was created right away by the first creator as an almost perfect being. He has a soul, and he is immortal also in his body. He's represented with Adam in the Bible Genesis. After reading this work, it'll be clear that the characters in our story have each a corresponding character in the ancient books that deal with the gods. Like in the Hebrew literature, 
but also in the Babylonian and in the Sanskrit literature. Now we need to make an important digression to allow you to understand why in these books there's the truth of the matter. Such texts cannot be taken literally, as if they were just historical texts, but they must be considered as myths, not legends, not chronological stories for events happened at a certain time, but myths. That is, archetypal symbols about what it is, what is true now, and what it is going to be. Primordial Man Creates the Aliens Primordial Man is an immortal being, and so he is not able to experience death. Hence, he needs other beings in order to experience death in his place. Primordial Man represents Adam, who, in order to be like his creator, creates in his turn, and he commits in this way a serious sin, the sin of arrogance. In the Hebrew tradition, Adam becomes, that is, it will become, a mortal being by eating from the tree of life and death, and he will be expelled from Eden. This Adam is not us, and his expulsion is symbolically happening now. We need to remember that the ancient sacred X must be interpreted symbolically. That is out of space and time, because they are about everything and not about what comes first and after, as people tend to believe nowadays. Here we have the aliens making their first appearance. All the ones that we already know and who knows how many more are out there and we don't even know about. The aliens don't have a soul, and so they die. In our organization chart, we represented the aliens with certain geometric shapes placed within a crystal parolepipt that limits their existence. The aliens see that their creator primordial man, who is different than the first creator, C1, is immortal because he has a soul, and so they plan to become like him. The aliens were created by primordial man in his own image and likeness, and so they make the same mistake that primordial man made towards his first and true creator, C1. Similia similibus concrenter. At this point, the aliens lie within their creator's control, primordial man, but they still try to overthrow the order and take the place of their own creator. In order to achieve this result, they need to become immortal and so be on the same level as primordial man. So, the aliens plan to steal the soul component from primordial man. But primordial man understands that his creatures are secretly rebelling against him, and so he takes refuge in a part of the universe where the aliens cannot enter. See you soon on the next episode.